Hi everyone and welcome back to our class on artificial intelligence and machine learning in finance. In this video we want to have a look at support vector machines as another method for classification. And as you remember the last video we saw that, and we'll see this even in more detail later on in the applications, that classification is often used in finance, at least, for example, in credit risk management, where we want to classify good and bad loans, uh, defaulting customers and non-defaulting customers. Um, in insurance um, economics, insurance management could be that we want to identify and classify those customers who are most prone to terminate their contract and to switch to another insurance company. So support vector machines are another way of doing this, of classification, for classification. And as such, it's quite similar to K-nearest neighbor, but more sophisticated. And if we speak about support vector machines, usually this is the summary term for three distinct methods. Uh, we start out with the so-called maximal margin classifier. Um, we'll then um, skip to the support vector classifier. And if we extend the support vector classifier, we get the support vector machines. And we'll come to that uh, probably in the next video. We have to start with the basic definition of a so-called hyperplane. What is a hyperplane? A hyperplane in P dimensions in the P dimensional space is a flat affine and such um, it's linear subspace of dimension P minus one. So for example, in two dimensions, if we have uh, the plane, um, um, a hyperplane is a line. For example, this is a hyperplane. This is a hyperplane or even this is a hyperplane. So this is a line, a linear line in the two-dimensional space, a plane. In three-dimensional space, it's a plane. So you can see how this goes. If this is a three-dimensional space, for example, well, I need to probably sketch this right now. Um, could, for example, be that it's this hyperplane. Yeah, so it's cut here uh, on the z-axis. So this could be, let me sketch this a little bit for you. Let's use, for example, this here would be a plane in the three-dimensional space with, let's say, P, um, no, not P, but Z being equal to, let's say, 3. So we have X, Y, and Z, the three coordinates, and this is the hyperplane, this blue plane that cuts through the three-dimensional space at Z equal to three. So as you can see, a hyperplane divides the p-dimensional space into two halves, and it's defined by this equation. You have um, the uh, linear combination of uh, the coordinates, uh, beta zero plus beta one, times x1 plus so on until plus beta p times xp and this needs to be equal to zero so that you get a hyperplane. That's a hyperplane. Quite simple and you can now see why we're using hyperplanes here at the very start because in the two-dimensional case here in the plane uh, such a line cuts uh, through the plane and cuts it into two halves. So, um, for example, if we have some observations like here, 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 and here, and maybe here, and um, we have certain features associated with these points, well, then, for example, this could be a decision boundary, this red line. So, meaning that in the blue space on top here, um, all the observations that fall into here are classified as blue points and those that fall below this line are classified into the red class. So the hyperplane is used for classification. And how should we do this? Well, as input data, we have n times p observations. We get a data matrix um, of n observations in the p-dimensional space. Um, each observation belongs to one class. That is, we have the response, qualitative response variables y1 to ym, and we have minus one or one as the um, response variables uh, possible values. Minus one represents one class, 
and one the other. So we only have two classes right now. We can extend all these models to uh, the case where we have more classes, like for example, um, default, triple A, double A rating, and so on. It works well with ratings, um, but we start out with just two classes. And minus one is one class, one is the other one. Um, we have a test observation with a P vector of observed features. This is X star, X one star up until X P star. And as output, we get classification of X star using a separating hyperplane. So we use a hyperplane that cuts the P dimensional space into two halves. And then we can decide um, to which class these observations belong. Quite simple. Uh, this classifier based on a separating hyperplane. Uh, if we, for example, have these blue and these red observations, um, you can see that all these lines, they separate the blue from the red points. And we can then say, well, uh, for example, if we use this line here, this separating hyperplane, then everything that is on top is class blue and everything below is class red and we can use the hyperplane for classification so it's very very simple now problem if one separating hyperplane exists and it doesn't necessarily need to exist it could be that there isn't a separating hyperplane quite simple scenario where for example if we mix all those points those blue and red points uh, um, in here then if these are, for example, these are red points, if I add some red points, if I add some, no, sorry, if I add some blue points here, you can easily see without proof that uh, it gets quite difficult to find a separating hyperplane uh, that is, it has to be linear. That's the definition of a hyperplane. So you can see, uh, try to, um, insert a separating hyperplane, it, it, it will not work. So there isn't one in this scenario. The question if, is, if one separating hyperplane exists, then we have an infinite number of such hyperplanes. You can see that I can add numerous, an infinite number of hyperplanes here, as long as each hyperplane still separates uh, all these points. So we have an infinite number. The question is, which one should we use? And this is where we get to the maximal margin classifier. Now, the natural choice um, is the maximal margin hyperplane, which is the separating hyperplane that is farthest from the training observations. What we need to do is we first compute the perpendicular distance from each training observation to a given separating hyperplane. We can do this actually if I uh, delete some of my um, drawings here. And if, for example, we use this one, for example, we calculate the perpendicular distances to, let me just see, this is almost perpendicular, less, uh, to the hyperplane from each side. You can see this here. And then we try to find the separating hyperplane such that the maximal, this is called the margin, the maximal distance is, well, it's maximal. And this is probably not the maximal margin classifier because you can see that now I've shifted the line, the hyperplane to the left. And even though these uh, distances, for example, this one here, has now become larger, this one here has become smaller. So actually we're trying to fit the hyperplane somewhere in between here, such that the distances from the blue points and the distances from the red points are equidistant. And such uh, is the way how to uh, construct the maximal margin classifier. So we compute those distances. The smallest such, such distance is known as the margin, and then we maximize the margin. It's the separating hyperplane for which the margin is largest. So this is what we get. As you can see here, um, the distance, the margin is now maximal. And actually it's the same uh, when considering the blue points and the red points. Now, the interesting fact here is that actually, as you can see here, adding a red point here or adding a blue point here in the left, uh, 
doesn't actually change the maximal margin hyperplane and the classifier. Why is that? Because the maximal margin classifier only depends on this, this, and this point on these three points. And this is why they are called support vectors. They support the hyperplane. And these are the only points, and in p-dimensional space, these are vectors. Um, these are the only points or vectors that determine the separating hyperplane. Changing these support vectors will get a different classifier, will get a different separating hyperplane. But actually, if you add any points on the left or the right, uh, the classifier will not change. And this is why this, these are actually called support vectors. Uh, and now you can see why later on it's called the support vector classifier and the support vector machine. However, this is still the maximal margin hyperplane and uh, the maximal margin classifier. How can we construct this um, in more detail? Well, the maximal margin hyperplane is uh, the solution to a specific optimization problem. Um, we need to maximize the margin. This is M. So we are looking for those parameters, beta 0, beta 1, and so on, beta P and M, such that M is maximized. Subject 2, we summarize, we sum the squared coefficients beta J. They need to add up to 1. And YI times, um, actually the hyperplane, needs to be larger or equal than M. Meaning what? Well, actually remember that yi is either minus 1 or 1, and this constraint 26 ensures that each observation will be on the correct side of the hyperplane. We have some buffer, some margin m, that's clear. So it could be actually that uh, we also have some points in between this area here, for example, here, um, here. Probably then we have, uh, if it's switched, um, but this is the margin. And constraint 25 ensures that each observation is at least a distance m from the hyperplane. So this needs to be the case. And then we maximize and choose the coefficients, which will determine the hyperplane such that m is maximal. Now, this is a very simple classifier. Now. Um, if a separating hyperplane exists, we should use the maximal margin classifier. But the question is, is this always the case? No, uh, this is the non-separable case. Uh, I've tried to sketch this before, but you can start anywhere here and try to find a hyperplane that separates these points. Well, no, there are still red points here, can go up. And this is okay, but then we have one red point here and you can see I cannot put a line through this plane without having some red points on the left and some blue points on the right side of this uh, hyperplane. So this is a problem. Okay, so this is the non-separable case. In this case, we don't have a separating hyperplane and we cannot use the maximal margin classifier. Now, if a separating hyperplane exists, should we always use a classifier based on it? The answer, unfortunately, is no, uh, because it's quite sensitive to new observations. Um, and as you can see here, for example, if this is the maximal margin classifier, if I add a point, let's say here, this doesn't change anything. But in this case, we've added one point here. And as you can see, instead of moving um, the separating hyperplane just a bit, let's say this is the old one. And let's say, OK, this is also OK. And this is one error we make, but this is still OK, um, because the maximum margin classifier separates all blue from all red points. You can see it's extremely sensitive and it suddenly um, gives us this decision boundary. So even if a separating hyperplane exists, it might be that we don't want this level of perfection because then it's the bias will be low, the variance will be quite high. So this is why in the next step and in the next video, we'll extend the maximum margin classifier, allow for some degree of error, and we will get to the support vector classifier.